Happy New Year! It is our first video back after the big New Year celebration. Hope you guys had a great time, whatever it was that you did. And I figured rather than talking about New Year's resolutions, because let's be honest, that kind of upsets a lot of people and, you know, doesn't really stick around for that long. I figured instead of that, I would just talk about some bad cleaning habits that we're all guilty of, myself included and I'll show you how to break them. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you have a bad cleaning habit that you need to break. Using too much product. You might think that it's a good idea to use more product, especially if there's a super dirty surface or if you have really dirty clothing, but the truth is that using more product, laundry detergent or soap, is actually worse for the situation because whatever it is that you're cleaning is going to require more cleaning because now not only do you have the dirt, but you also have all of that soap that's really sudsy and sticky that you now have to rinse away. So when you're cleaning anything, whether it's doing your laundry or cleaning your floors or a surface, always remember to use less product than what you might be inclined to use. And by the way, when companies make instructions on the back of their package, it's there for you to read it. So check them out and figure out exactly how much you need to use for the appropriate dose for the situation that you need to clean. Moldy bath mats and shower curtains. You get out of a shower, you're feeling good and groovy. You don't really wanna think about doing any chores. I get it. But the thing is, if you forget to close your shower curtain and pull up your non-slip bath mat, those things get so grungy. And grungy means full of mold and mildew odors and trap a lot of moisture. Think about it like this. If you leave your non-slip bath mat down after a shower, all of the moisture that's stuck under the suction cups is gonna stay there. And then mold and mildew start growing, soap scum gets stuck under there, nasty. And then if you don't actually close your shower curtain all the way, the same thing happens. In the folds, you start to get all of this grunge. That is grunge formation over there. So make sure when you get out of the shower, you pull up that bath mat, you close your shower curtains, and you also turn on your overhead exhaust and leave it for at least 30 minutes. That's going to help get any of that excess moisture out of your bathroom. Cleaning with dirty cleaning tools. That's nasty. And we actually have a video on how to clean your cleaning tools so that you're actually using fresh stuff when you clean. Guys, you cannot clean a surface with something that is dirty. Not only will it make the surface look physically dirty, for example, if you use a dirty mop on a floor, you are never going to get your floor clean. You're actually just gonna take the dirt that's stuck in the mop and redeposit it all over your floor, which is just like a cycle of insanity because your floor is never gonna look good. And secondly, it can also spread bacteria around a surface. So particularly like a dirty sponge, that is gross. So what you need to do is make sure that your tools are cleaned and maintained before you actually hit the cleaning circuit and that way your space will actually be clean and you'll be using good quality tools to make sure the job is done. Disinfectant wipes for cleaning. I know it seems convenient to take that canister, whip out a wipe and do a bunch of cleaning, but truthfully, those wipes were not designed to clean entire surfaces. They're designed for a very specific purpose that would be disinfecting a particular area. So if you've got to clean something, no problem. Just make sure that you're using the right products and tools. So for example, an all-purpose cleaner, a microfiber cloth, great, clean a surface. If you need to disinfect that surface, go ahead, use a disinfectant wipe, fine. But otherwise, make sure you're using the right stuff. Piling up damp towels and cloths. Every time I do a laundry video, so many questions come in about how do I get my towels not to be smelly or my cleaning cloths always smell. And if you're putting those things in your hamper while they're still wet, mold and mildew are going to start to form because everything is clumped on top of each other. The moisture has no way to escape. So it just kind of starts to multiply and feed off all of the dirty schmutz already stuck on the towels and cloths. So all you need to do is make sure that any of your towels or cloths are fully dried before you throw them into the dirty laundry hamper. And then you'll never have that issue with your laundry smelling. Using bleach as a cleaner. I don't use bleach in my house, but I know many of you guys do and cool, whatever you like to use is totally fine. The problem is when people say that they're cleaning with bleach, they're actually not cleaning anything. Bleach has two distinct purposes. 
The first one is to whiten, which is why people like using it in laundry. And the second one is to disinfect. So if you're using bleach to clean any surface, for example, cleaning a toilet, you're actually not doing much cleaning if you just dump bleach in there and swish a brush around. You might be getting rid of bacteria, but odors and hard water buildup and stains, all that stuff is still gonna be right there in the toilet. So if you're gonna use bleach, fine, just make sure you're using it properly. By the way, I'm curious, do you guys use bleach at home? Let me know in the comments down below. Leaving your dirty dishes in the sink. I know what it feels like to finish a meal and just chuck your dishes in the sink. It's so convenient. But the truth is, a lot of you guys complain about the fact that your dishes pile up and you feel like you can never stay on top of that. So the bad habit here is putting your dishes in the sink instead of directly in the dishwasher or quickly hand washing them. It might take a couple extra seconds, but the truth is once it's done, it's done. Your kitchen's gonna look a lot cleaner and more appealing to be in in the long run. Holding on to old stuff. Never has the saying, out with the old, in with the new, rung any more true. Take magazines, for example. If you get magazines every month, they start to pile up. I know, because I have recently dealt with this issue. And you might think, oh, but I need that magazine from three months ago because there was this thing in there and I want to reference it. The truth is, you're probably never going to go back to that magazine. So what you need to do is keep in mind when you get a new thing, a new magazine, get rid of the old magazine. If you give it away or recycle it, whatever it is you choose to do with it, make sure it leaves your house. You gotta get out with the old and in with the new. Cluttered surfaces. Yes, there are a lot of surfaces in a home, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those surfaces need to be cluttered up with your stuff. So when you have a surface, don't look at it as sort of a temporary storage solution. Look at it as a deliberate space. It should have a set amount of things, a vase, a tray, a picture frame, but not like a pile of mail, six books, a bottle of wine, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't belong on random surfaces. So if you notice that that's becoming a problem, the first thing to keep in mind is that the random stuff kind of needs a home. So it would be a good thing to establish where that stuff actually belongs and then put it there. And secondly, if you do need some of that space to store stuff, cool, but just do it in an organized fashion. So maybe invest in some baskets or a tray. Using paper towels instead of cleaning cloths. I know how convenient it is to rip off a sheet of paper towel if you have the roll prominent in your kitchen, but the truth is it's wasteful and it's expensive. So if you have to reach for something, whether it's a napkin or a cleaning cloth or a dish towel, make sure you're grabbing for the right cloth instead of just conveniently grabbing paper towel. Big waste of money. I did the math. It's about, let's say a buck 25 for a roll of paper towel. If you put that over a year, you average using two rolls a week. That's $130. Such a waste of money, not to mention the environmental impact. So what I recommend, get some cloth napkins, get some good quality cleaning cloths. I don't know, makers cleaning cloths, like that might be a good idea. And also make sure that you have appropriate dish towels. And that way, when you do actually need paper towels, for example, when you have to clean up a surface that you wouldn't want to mess up a towel or a cloth using, great, grab the paper towel. But otherwise, you have your alternatives. I know my plugs for my cloths aren't so subtle, but I mean, we're here, so why not? If you didn't get Maker's Cleaning Cloths under the tree or wrapped up this past holiday season, no problem. You can go to makersclean.com and you can order some for yourself. It's 2017, treat yourself. We also ship them worldwide, so pretty much anywhere you are, we can get them to you. Visit makersclean.com to learn all about them. This week's comment question is, well guys, it's your opportunity to confess in the comments down below, what is your bad habit? It could be a cleaning thing, it could not be a cleaning thing. I mean, don't say anything criminal down there, but definitely let us know what are some of the bad habits that you're gonna try to break this year. I'd love to hear them. There's a playlist over here that you can check out and two other videos down here that I think you're going to love. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.